Hi and welcome. My name is Ayman Aitani. I work with founders to help them grow their business and with government entities as they build entrepreneurship programs. Today, we're talking about the myth of entrepreneurship and the startup myths. I come across these all the time with my discussions with founders or wannabe founders. I'm going to share them with you so that as you think about your journey, so whether you're getting started or you're within your journey, for you to look at and reflect on what is it really that is true that's happening and what is not. All right. So and uh, at any point in time, please uh, feel free to raise your hand or chat uh, or, or, or ask a question in the q and I'll be happy to, to stop and then take care of it. We'll be together for a little bit less than 30 minutes and I'll open up for some questions towards the end. Uh, I'm, I'm active on Instagram when it comes to business content. So anything related to content related to business growth, how to hire a team, business process, customer retention, I'm happy to answer uh, those questions for you. And next week, uh, I'm talking about how to acquire customers. So if you're B2B or B2C, I talk about the different ways with that you can acquire uh, customers. Uh, we'll be covering tactics and things, things like this. So the link, is in the, uh, the link has been shared in chat. If you want to go ahead and register for next week and get the reminders. Now, let's address one myth at a time. My friends and family love my idea. I come across this all the time, especially with founders who are just getting started. My strong recommendation, and I've seen this space so many times, don't believe your friends and family when they say they will buy from you. As long as it's free and it's your idea stage and you ask them, what, what is your opinion about my idea? They're gonna say, we love it. They're gonna say, we're gonna buy from you. They're gonna say, it's great, you should do this. When you launch, none of them will spend the dirham buying from you. Maybe there's one person who just feels very awkward not buying from you and they buy from you once, but they won't renew if it's a subscription or a return purchase. To build a better product or service, I'd recommend you talk to strangers. They'd give you the honest feedback, they'd give you that. Think about the times when, you know, personally, when you've had a bad haircut or you've gained weight and so on, and you've asked your friends and family and they give you, oh, like, we love your hair, or uh, you know how it is. Uh, we want to, uh, we all want to be loved and we look for certain uh, feedback and we receive the feedback that we're looking for. So if you're looking but from a business product market fit perspective, I would talk to strangers to get feedback from them on what is working, what is not, as you optimize and build your product. Another myth is the need to raise venture capital. Uh, you know, so many founders, they feel it's a, it's a rite of passage. It's something that they have to do as founders is they have to raise money. If they don't raise money, that means they are not founders. There's nothing wrong building a business that is self-funded, that you have $2 million in revenue at 40% profit. 40% profit is $800,000. That's $67,000 a month. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can do that without raising venture capital, depending on the business. But don't do it for validation. There are so many founders I know, they either do it for validation. Uh, it's mostly validation because they want their name in the press. They want people to say, Mabrook, uh, the congratulations on your raise. Celebrating debt, they're raising debt, right? So whatever, if they raise $500,000 or if you raise $2 million, you have to give it back, expectations tenfold. So that's a debt that you're raising. So it's finally difficult to celebrate raising debt. So uh, other entrepreneurs uh, uh, congratulate each other. The media does this. It's not something necessarily to celebrate. I would celebrate uh, uh, growth as in business growth from customer acquisition, uh, capability internally, and so on. So. Raising venture capital is not a rite of passage unless you need a very specific, uh, if it's a inventory heavy or so on. So that's the exception, not the rule. Uh, family and friends or bootstrapping is definitely, definitely an area that you can, that you can work on. But, that, but of course, the growth is much slower and much longer term. And um, again, if you can graduate, you don't need to build a $300 million business building a $2 million annual business with 40% net profit is a very decent and very healthy business that can generate for you personally $67,000 a month. Now let's look at startup myths as well. Why hasn't my company been acquired yet? A lot of founders I speak with, they feel that I'm going to leave my job within two years, maybe three, 
you know, uh, I'll be either acquired or I'll hire a top-notch CEO who will run my whole business for me. That is unlikely to happen. Unlikely. Let's look at the stars. Souk, 2005. It took him 12 years to be acquired. Karim, eight. And during those eight to, to 12 years, there are thousands of startups who died. We're not all building the Instagram that was, you know, Instagram is the exception. In two years, 13 members of staff, they exited for 750 million. Those are the exception. What are the chances of that happening again? Very low. And within that low percentage, that percentage is going to happen to you. Let's be realistic about what we can or can't do. So yes, you might be acquired, but you, it won't happen in, in less than 10 years. Very unlikely. So you need to have a consistent patience and execution to grow properly and grind for eight, nine, 10 years uh, for you to start to be able to, to reach a stage where you might be able to acquire. And look, let's look at acquisition backgrounds, right? So there's a geography buy moving into a certain market. So uh, expanding, so somebody wants to expand into a certain market being acquired. Um, there are many businesses in the UAE and Saudi Arabia who have been waiting to be acquired by their global uh, competitor and the global competitor opens up their own local office. They hire people from their own team. They don't buy them. They, they compete with them directly in the market with the bigger, bigger coffer of funds and they poach team members of yours. So it may or may not happen. There's a strategic market buy. So if you, you know, if a company wants to go into another sector, so I can give you some of my personal examples. So there were companies who are not in the, you know, in the consulting space. So I'm in, you know, the company I founded is in business consulting. We work with founders to grow their business. We work with government entities to help them manage uh, uh, entrepreneurship programs. And there is a company, uh, you know, one or two companies in the, for a while were discussing potential acquisition. It's not in their sector, so they're looking to grow additional revenue in uh, sectors like the one that we're in. So that's a strategic market buy. And uh, just to update you, didn't, they didn't go through because of two sides, our side and their side. So from our side, how we look at it and why, and if this is right for us or not, and there's the money valuation aspect, of course. And there's also the aspect where from their side, so I've had these discussions where they're not in the digital business, right? One of them was not in the digital business. I used to sit with their CFO and then he'd look at our books and say, how come you guys don't have inventory? How come you guys have so little staff? How come you guys are growing these markets without being physically there? So those digital discussions were, were very awkward for me to have. And at some point it's like, okay, Rook, you know, it, it seems that we're not the right partners for us to do. So those are things that you have to be very, mind, very mindful of. Um, the technology product buy, this happens when um, it's an old school, uh, 50, 60, 80 year, year old uh, company, and they're looking to go into digital technology that you have acquired, that you have, right? And they've been building it for, uh, on their own for a while and it hasn't worked for them. And they're looking to acquire your technology and, and your, your customers and your process. Sometimes you have a numbers buy. So we have a lot of food acquisition in the region, out of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and the UAE. A lot of it has to do with these are publicly traded companies and they need to show growth numbers. So for them, it's easier to buy a company to show growth numbers uh, and that will help them with their either going IPO or with their, with their existing public offerings and so on. So that's numbers buy. So those are different reasons why uh, they look at that. Now let's talk about product. So many discussions I have with founders. Tla, go live, launch, go live. Ayman, one more feature before we can go live. Three months later, Ayman, I just need this feature and that feature and so on. And then months and months and months pass and they haven't gone live yet. My recommendation is get it 80% right and then go live. It will never be perfect uh, because it's not about you, what you want as a founder. It's about what you, you, the market is buying, what people are buying from you. There's a company called Karim. This is their first screenshot, right? This is where they started. They posted this a few days ago. Uh, I came across and I wanted to save it. So this was how they started and this is where they are now. And if you want to be specific, even they didn't have an app in the beginning. In the beginning, they had a website that you book from uh, and they had a call center that you call to make a booking. That's how they started. So start and then move into a bigger, better product when people tell you what they want, how they want it and what they want from you. 
Ah, uh, yes. The product will sell on its own. With, once I release my product, Ayman, I'll just put a few posts on social media and run some ads, and then the product will sell on its own. There are so many YouTube videos that promise you passive income. There's nothing, there's nothing called passive income. There's nothing where they're gonna show you how to acquire customers while you're on a beach somewhere. You run an ad, so Facebook and Instagram and Google ads, they, they run your acquisition for you, and then your customers are gonna to go to your website or your app, they're gonna download, they're gonna pay, they're gonna book, you don't have to do anything. None of it is there, that does not exist. There's, don't even try. It's a, many, it's a misconception that many founders have. Um, running ads is difficult. It's easy to go in and launch them, but running ads to get the right customer is not straightforward, especially when you don't have product market fit. So even before you're running ads, you need to have great product market fit. I know many founders who are poor at running their ads, but they have such a great product market fit that people go through the hoops to get through them. They go through their uh, poor targeting and their ads to get through them. So there's no beach life, there's nothing there. People want, so customers want to get help, they want questions, they're gonna ask you for things. It is not straightforward. So there's no passive income when it comes to that. A common question of a business degree, uh, you don't need that. Some people wait for a business degree or, or, or they feel insecure, they don't have a business degree to run a business. Your degree doesn't matter. As long as people are buying from you, it doesn't matter. People are gonna be curious what you study, but they don't. In some very rare cases, you need a, a PhD or a specialty aspect of it and so on. Uh, Karim, I, thank you for attending. I see you in the audience. Yes, your background, because you're building such a very specific technology-based product, your background like this will definitely need uh, uh, that type of experience and degree. But for most other businesses that are trying to sell products online or, or services and so on, you don't need that specialized degree. Uh, Outsourcing customer service. So they look to outsource customer service and I don't think that's uh, something that, maybe in the short term, yes, but long term, no. The reason being is that um, in the beginning, you're trying to build your team, your product, your service, you're figuring things out. So we'll put customer service on the side. We'll have somebody who has more experience to do so. But um, I've spoken about this in one of my early webinars is usually those companies have a very entry level folks uh, who have a script to follow and their objective is to go through certain motions to finish through their day. Your objective as a founder, as a company, is one, to find what problems that are common in your business so that you can go back to the origin of the problem. Is it product-based? Is it in the service offering? And so on. So you need that first-hand experience to go back to your product to fix it or so, so that it does, so be, to be, be, be more proactive before it happens and also to get the common complaints from your customers so that you continue to innovate and change in your product offering. And that will definitely help you with your customer retention. If only I had more money, you will never have enough money, time, or memory. I read this in a book back in 1994. There was something called DOS. DOS is, you know, it was even long before Windows. This was one of Microsoft's initial offering. In that book, I read this quote of, you never have enough money, time, or memory, and it stuck with me. For them, so time and money is what we understand. In memory, what they're talking about was memory memory chips, uh, how, many, how much RAM you have in your computer. It's even true until today in the powerful machines that we already have in our phones and computers, we can definitely use more, uh, more RAM. Uh, so uh, definitely, definitely, you never have enough money, time, or memory. So don't wait until you have enough money to do so. Um, I want to share with you this video, which I cannot play here due to the fancy embedding I'm doing here. Give me a second, I will play that. This is from Kareem, the founders of Kareem. What they did was they have, they shared uh, their experience of going, of starting the business. They share with, with how they started. I was at an event uh, that was celebrating 10 years of entrepreneurship. And it had the founders of Amazon, it has the founders of Kareem, uh, the founders of Rate.com. So it had the different founders, and those founders were talking about their struggles and what they did in order to, to start their business and, and, and what they needed. Uh, it's, on, it's on my YouTube uh, channel, you, you'll go ahead and see it. So the, uh, what the founder does, he talks about, uh, so that's Magnus, one of the co-founders of Kareem. He talks about 
um, how he talks with founders and they tell them that they're spending so much try, time trying to figure out their business model and so on. And he's being clear that you should go ahead and start. Uh, just go ahead and start the business. Don't, uh, uh, don't wait until you have the perfect uh, product, the perfect uh, uh, aspect of it. So uh, this, is the, uh, this is the link to the video. It's in the chat. Thank you, Rita, for sharing it. And what I want to do is I wanted to get some questions from you, if there are any questions uh, for me to go ahead and answer. And so the questions I can answer are related to business growth, and related to how to get customers, related to uh, myths or things that you're trying to do or think about and so on. Um, you can go ahead and unmute and, and go ahead and ask your questions, or, you could, uh, or we could do that over Instagram later. Abu? Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good call, Abu. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was un yeah, I was un unmuting and muting myself, and uh, yeah, nice way to call me out. I just wanted to ask one uh, one small question. Uh, am I am I audible by any chance? Uh, can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead. So when you say like uh, just launch, <laughs> so so I mean, like you said, uh, totally agree that it's not a perfect product. But uh, we get we get to hear everyone, you know, just launch it, launch it. So when you launch it, how do you start talking to your customer? Um, can you give me some background, Abu, on what you're trying to launch? So uh, is it, are you still at idea stage now? Is it, uh, do you have an MVP or is it, uh, you have something cooking, but you're not ready if you want to launch? Okay, I, I have an MVP. Uh, so it's, so uh, there are a lot, lot of local stores over here that uh, they were distributing flyers, right? On daily basis, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm talking about the grocery stores, right? And because of COVID, I think they can't distribute the flyers at the moment. So I'm just trying to help them out at the moment. Uh, so helping the stores out uh, get much more better presence in the market. So what my MVP is doing at the moment is digitalizing all the flyers for the stores. Okay. So you have a product ready? Yeah. Have you spoken? Android. With, have you spoken? Android. It's fine. Android is enough. Have you spoken with groceries already or not? I've spoken to two. Uh, uh, so, so honestly, I don't need any of the groceries at the moment. I just need to, I wanted to create the demand and see if there is any requirement. Is there a problem like that? That users want to see flyers, I mean, in the mobile. So just want to know if there's a problem. Are you open like to that. giving it for free to your groceries at the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I, that would be amazing if they're ready to take it for free. I mean, uh, whatever, you know, when, for example, the just launch, uh, let's be tactical about what you hear about many people say just launch, just launch. In your case, you've spoken with two grocers. I talk with another two or three so mm -hmm. that you'd have at least four who signed up and used it. So you're not doing a public launch. You're not going online and you're making a big uh, noise about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also not tell your friends uh, or whatever, right? So you have a product. And then the reason I'm talking about free is to reduce the friction. So if you talk to a grocery saying, look, I can do this for you and this and so on, there's a zero cost to you. Even at a zero cost, they might question it. But if you say, I need a dinner hand, like, oh, it's a no. So uh, uh, this is why uh, uh, if you go with that, with the two, uh, but uh, you need a little bit more, get them on it and then start to distribute the fly, the digital flyers, digitally, however you want to distribute it. So start with a small, because I'm assuming you're acquiring customers with some ads on Instagram and Facebook and so on. Start with a small budget. And then see what happens. See the, see the feedback from your grocer, who tells you I don't have enough people or um, I can't update every time you have to update it for me or whatever problems that they will face. And then see updates from your customers who, you know, the end users who are gonna say, look, uh, there's no point getting this flyer because I can get it directly from one of the many other apps I can get the offers and so on. So that's the just started. So instead of spending the next six months building an, e an iOS version, go with the Android with two or three uh, with two or three uh, groceries. So I did almost uh, exactly what you have asked me to Great. do. The, pro Great. The, about problem, that. the problem I'm facing is uh, the store people keep on asking how many users you have. Yeah. And uh, and then if I give them for free, they're like, thank you very much. I don't know. They get scared anything for free. I don't know why. <laughs> so, so yeah, how many that's users, how many users do you, How many users do you think they need? I ask them, they, they, they want more analytics, who's going to, like, they don't want, you know, like, for example, if someone is in Jumeirah, there's yeah. no use getting someone in Dubai South, right? True. It's, it's a very local uh, stores, right? Uh, Abu, I think in this, in this case, you do a combination of two things. One part, mm -hmm. from when you first introduce the concept, 
you mm -hmm. would set expectations. Say, look, we have a very private beta in uh, the uh, Jumeirah area or uh, in Dubai South or whatever it is uh, of 200, uh, 200 people who are using mm -hmm. the app, all right? Or whatever the number, whatever number that, that you'll target for. I'll talk about the number. So, but set expectations clearly with the grocer saying, look, uh, this is very Dubai South specific as a launch and we're reaching out to groceries there. If you want to be one of the early ones in the, in the area, we're talking to all of them. They're going to, we have different ones that will be joining mm -hmm. and we have 200 people, whatever the number is. And, and you talk to the first one and then they say, no, you talk to the second one. There are many groceries. You can sign up five people. It's, 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 it, I, don't, I don't know, five companies. I don't think that's, a, that's going to be an issue. And then in terms of the number, I would do it based on how much money you can spend on ads because at the end it's going to be customer ads, right? So you can do like some form of geotargeting, you can target uh, Dubai South or, or, or Jumeirah area or whatever it is. And 200 downloads is, is 200, let's say you need 200 users, right? So let's say half, let's say half of who sign up or one third of who download the app sign up. So you need 600 installs. Mm -hmm. 600, and let's assume the install is at, I don't know, three dirhams. So you need 2,000 mm -hmm. dirhams almost. God Can you spend 2,000 dirhams to, to do a test to get, it's a rough estimate, right? 2,000 dirhams to get you 600 downloads. Those 600 downloads will get you 200 signups, right? So that yeah. is, that is the, the cost and the marketing that you need to do to get to 200 signups that you are using to communicate with, uh, with your B2B grocery when you're doing this. That's, that's a Great idea. Thank you very much. But th thank you, Abu, for your input. Uh, and thank yeah. you, the rest, for, for joining. Uh, and I'm happy to answer your questions later on on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, uh, whatever, uh, you know, whatever your poison is. I'm happy to answer questions there. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, if you need any questions, you, you let me know.